Sophia was born um, at 37 weeks, so she was quite small. Um, and then two weeks old, we had the community nurse come out and tell us that she'd actually lost too much weight. Um, we were sent back to hospital for the test, then confirmed that she had signs of cystic fibrosis. When we first got told that she had markings of CF, the first thing the doctor said to me was, do not go to Google. Obviously that made me want to Google more. Um, when we did Google, it told us that her life expectancy would be 37, which was hard to take because at that time that was only 10 years older than what I was. So it was a big reality shock and a fear of the unknown of what life was going to look like um, and how we were going to have to protect her basically from basic things that children get to enjoy in life that she now didn't get to. The fear of raising a child with CF and what could go wrong is them getting an illness and it damaging their lungs, that's irreversible. And when it becomes irreversible damage, that's when we have the risk of her life expectancy being shorter, her not being able to do daily activities that any other normal person without CF is able to do. It takes a whole toll on her whole body and as well as her mental health. So a day in life is fair. She has to wake up 45 minutes earlier than her brother to complete her daily physiotherapy. She has to take medication throughout the day when she has food with any fat content. So that's breakfast, lunch, dinner, snacks. So she can be having anywhere between 20 to 30 tablets in one day. And then before bed, Sophia has to have another nebulizer, which is called Palmazyme. And that's just another antibiotic type of medication that gets deep within her lungs to help clear the mucus. Sophia expressed daily that she doesn't like CF. Um, she does not like having to take tablets. It's a huge mental toll on an eight-year-old to understand the importance of why she needs the medication and why she needs to do her daily physiotherapy. It's a lot of explaining and a lot of reality of what could happen if you don't do the treatment, if you don't do the medication because we find that's the only way that she will understand is if we're upfront and we're honest about what could happen. It was amazing going into the Children's Medical Research Institute and meeting the scientists and seeing the work that they're doing. Being in the labs was something I've never got to experience or Sophia. Um, it's something she still talks about to this day and she can't wait to go back. And we are hoping to have a cure found in Sophia's lifetime. That is our end goal. But as long as we have medication that can keep her living as healthy and as long as possible, we will take what we can get. I would encourage people to donate for Genes for Genes because of the work they do to help children with genetic conditions that are unknown to the normal person. There's so many genetic conditions that are affecting children these days that don't get the funding that they're needing to have the research, to have the cures found that so many children are deserving of.